I apparently just love doing hard challenges lately, because today we're gonna be doing a rebuild of only undrafted players. I can only start with players that were undrafted, and I can only draft players that are projected to go undrafted. And I can't sign any free agents unless it was an undrafted player. So in other words, this is gonna be very, very hard, but also very, very fun, because I just love doing stuff like this. But super, super Super quick before we get into this video, I'm gonna keep this intro super short again. We've been doing very well with all the like goals lately, so let's see if we can get to 1500 likes on this video. I mean, if y'all are seeing this, it means we hit another like goal, and this is the special video for that, so if y'all wanna see another special video, 1500 likes. It takes you like two seconds to like the video, and it really, really helps out the channel. And speaking of stuff that helps out the channel, be sure to subscribe if you wanna be an OG of the channel while you still can be one. The time is, of course, running out. Again, thank you for 13k we're getting really close to 15k i think we're really close to 14k so let's see if we can get to 14k by the next time i upload a video and very last thing just let me know down below any fun rebuild ideas y'all might have because of course i'm gonna be doing a lot of fun ones for madden 24 even though i hate this game a little bit but that's enough plugging i'm really excited to get into this one so let's get into year number one of this rebuild and let's talk a little bit about this team but y'all have seen it pretty much i I mean, this is the roster. Really, it is old, but it isn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. It's an 81 overall. I think our best overall player is Austin Eckler, but a problem for this team is gonna be the quarterback position, because we have Tyler Huntley and Taylor Heineke, and that's it. Our receiving core could also be a big problem, because there isn't anyone here that I could see becoming like a true number one receiver, so our offense might struggle throughout the rebuild. Our offensive line is pretty good, and I'm not worried about being able to find solid undrafted linemen as much as I am for other certain positions. And then the defense, we definitely have some studs here. I mean, Charvarius Ward, Kenny Moore, JC Jackson, Jonathan Jones, Ryan Neal, Adrian Phillips, TJ Edwards, Shaq Barrett, Bryce Huff, Michael Pierce. Like, this is a pretty damn solid defense. This would be a really good defense in real life. The offense, I don't necessarily think so, just because of the QB position and this offensive line would get entirely injured by week five or something. Like, these are a lot of injury-prone players. But anyways, I'm excited to get into this rebuild, like I've said probably five times now. I might rearrange the depth chart a little bit, because I don't know what the hell our defensive scheme is. Like, we're a 4-3, we're a but we have Shaq Barrett at off-ball linebacker, and we have Danico Autry as a 4-3 defensive end. He might have done that before for the Colts, I can't remember. Also, Shai Tuttle there, and Roy Robertson-Harris. So, so I'll rearrange that a little bit, but with that, let's get into this rebuild and let's get to the midseason point of year number one. Okay, I might have signed myself up for hell in this one, because at the midseason point of year one, we are one and six. Not great, uh, believe it or not. I thought we would be a little better than that, considering we do have a decent team. We're an 82 overall, but not doing great so far. But there are literally no re-signings to make here other than Trent Sherfield, and he's not interested, so... Not super interested in that, but I guess I want to do something here, so I guess I'll show my focus scouting position. We're probably just going to go QB, because I'm guessing part of the problem we're not great is because Tyler Huntley probably isn't doing great. Well, I've seen worse. Uh, that's a lot of picks, though. 1,800 yards, 14 touchdowns, 13 picks. If the interceptions were lower, he would actually be doing really well, but just the interceptions are not lower. <laughs> I do know that Taylor Heineke does well in this game though. At least he did in last year's game, but this game is identical to last year's, so I don't know. We could try out Heineke, but I don't want to give up on Tyler Huntley yet, quite yet. So we'll just get to the end of the year and hopefully, hopefully we can finish pretty strong. We'll see. Okay, well, <laughs> at the end of year one, we finish 4-13. and 13. I thought we would be much better than that, and surprisingly, it was our defense that looks like uh, was not good. We had the 31st scoring defense in the 19th scoring offense so our offense wasn't too bad but our defense definitely was Tyler Huntley 4,200 yards 33 touchdowns 23 picks that's not great obviously but I've seen a lot worse so that's not too bad we had two 1,000 yarders I just skipped over the rushing 1,200 yards for Austin Eckler 4.5 per carry 14 touchdowns he was a monster low-key really good year from him Jacoby Myers with 1,150 yards and 13 touchdowns 
Adam Thielen with 1,100 yards. Only three touchdowns, though. Kendrick Bourne had 11 touchdowns. That's pretty good. The blocking was questionable. Leal Collins at left tackle wasn't great. David Andrews was pretty bad, but the rest of it was pretty good. TJ Edwards led the team with 127 tackles. Tackles for loss, we had a lot. Danico Autry with 22. Frankie Luvu with 20. And then sacks, not any at all, pretty much. We had six and a half from Frankie Luvu, six from Autry, four and a half for Barrett, and four for Huff. Not great numbers there. The interceptions were solid, though. Four for JC Jackson, two for Traverius Ward, and then one for a number of players. I wish our pass rush was better, because we do have good pass rushers. They just didn't do very well. Okay, I'm genuinely going to drop Dak to like a 70 overall in my custom rosters. I said that in the last video I did. He should not be winning MVP every fucking year, dude. Or like top twoing it. It's so stupid. But Mahomes at number two, who would have guessed? At least it's a different number three in Trevor Lawrence. Normally it's either Lamar or Hertz or Josh Allen. I don't know where Josh Allen went, by the way. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor. Defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby, who would have guessed? Frankie Luvu at number seven. So at least we have somebody up there. I'm kind of surprised he was up there though. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Tank Dell. I don't know if we had any rookies. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Drew Sanders. We might have had some rookies, but I don't think any were starting. Low key, who is Truman Jones? That's somebody I'm not familiar with. But kind of an unfortunate year one, but I am optimistic about the future. I think our defense can take a step up a little bit, and if Tyler Huntley doesn't completely fall off a cliff, this team could be pretty good in the near future. So let's get into the offseason, and let's hopefully upgrade this team in the draft. The problem with this team, though, is it is older. So we're gonna face a lot of regression and probably a few retirements this first year. So even though it wasn't good, it might get even worse. We do have some upgrades. Oh, it's just like practice squad guys, but we do have an upgrade for Jacoby Myers. Did he win like a best receiver award or something? I mean, he wasn't that crazy, but he was good for sure. Oh, he must have. He went up to superstar dev. Wait, I was saying we don't have a number one receiver or anyone that could be one, but maybe Jacoby Myers with superstar dev at only 27. I mean, not that 27 is super young, but he could turn into a really good player for us. We'll see. And I don't know who we're going to be able to keep out of those practice squad guys. But I want to see, did like Adam Thielen, re no, he didn't retire yet. He did regress though. It doesn't look like he regressed too hard, just too overall. I actually do want to see who won the Super Bowl this year though. I hate that you can't like just see it. It doesn't show it anymore for some reason. It was the 49ers over the Bengals. Interesting. <laughs> but we don't really need to bring Trent Sherfield back. I mean, he could be a good like fifth or sixth guy for the future because we have some older receivers, but meh, I'm good. And honestly, in free agency, I don't know if we're gonna go for anyone. Like, unless there's some random breakout, which it would be hard to even find someone that would have a random breakout. Like, unless that happens, I don't think we're gonna be very active in free agency. Unless we're just filling out depth or something, I could look through for a maybe solid undrafted guy. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty hard to find. Was Avante Maddox drafted? Oh, okay, he was a fourth round pick. Well, shit, never mind. And J. Ron Curse was a seventh round pick. Damn it. Okay. So we're not gonna do anything in free agency, unfortunately. So let's just get to the draft. But here we are in the draft, and I really couldn't find any good looking players. I mean, shocking, I know. A draft of only not draftable caliber players isn't exactly a great draft. But I did, I did find some solid ones, at least. Mostly good looking linebackers. We do kind of need linebacker depth, so that does work out, but it's not like that's the most valuable position in the world, obviously. <laughs> there were a couple quarterbacks. It did fully scout all the quarterbacks. There are only two draftable ones, by the way, at least that are projected to be drafted, but there are two projected to be undrafted that are draftable in George Barrett and Dalton Ross, both day three, but we might just take both of them <laughs> just to see what happens. You never know. One of them could have a dev trait and that would be pretty huge, but I think we are just going to go with one of the linebackers or a few of them, maybe. Jermaine Shirley looks like probably the best one just because he is fast, decently strong too. So I think he might be the number two overall pick in this draft. Imagine thinking, oh, hey, I, I have faith in myself, right? But the NFL doesn't and I'm probably going to be an undrafted player. And imagine getting called up with the number two overall pick like, hey, we're going to take you right here. That would be like insane. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do here for Mr. Jermaine Shirley out of Auburn. Not a small school.
school at all, but just overlooked and I think he looks pretty good. His awareness isn't great and he's going to have terrible coverage, but I think he could be a good run defender and is athletic. So let's take him here. Good speed, really good excel, good strength. I don't know if he's going to be a crazy overall, but I think he'll come in somewhere around maybe a 70. We'll see. And I do maybe want another linebacker because those are the positions that looked really good. There's Dante Scott, who kind of just looks like a slower version of the guy we just took, and then Chandler Perry, a coverage safety, or cover linebacker, who at least has B tackle, which is solid, but he's not very fast, so I don't know if he's actually good. Ah, yes, a 4.8 speed pass coverage safety. That's solid speed. Did I say safety again? I need to fucking sleep, dude. He does not look good, though. <laughs> Damn it, bro, this tight end right here looks so goddamn good, but I just can't take him. I hate this. <laughs> Why do the good players show up when I can't take him? There is a good blocking tight end, though. He's really slow, but is strong. His catching is so bad, but he is a good blocker, as you would hope for a pure blocking tight end. He has good awareness, too. I don't think he's good, but I, nobody else here looks good, so let's take him. He does have hidden dev. 79 speed, 82 strength. I thought the strength would be a little higher, but he might be decent. We'll take it. Sometimes those random blocking tight ends are, like, insane. I don't know if he's one of them, but there are some that I've seen before, at least in last year's game. But this game is no different, so I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty much just a copy and paste of last year's game, so it's probably the same. But let's go with Dante Scott, another one of these linebackers. Looks solid, I guess. This is gonna make me better at finding undrafted talent in drafts, so I guess that's a good thing. That's a positive from this rebuild. So another big school guy, Texas A&M. I'm surprised there aren't, like, fucking Delaware and, like, South Alabama and, like, Eastern Washington guys down here. They're all, like, big school guys, like USC, Tennessee, two Tennessee guys, what the hell? And, wait, two USC, what the fuck? Why? <laughs> okay, gotta love that logic. And another Auburn linebacker at the same position, that makes sense. Sense. But yeah, let's go with Dante Scott out of Texas A&M. Normal dev, 80 speed, 86 excel though. I don't know if he's good, but we took him. He might be. <laughs> and for the last pick that I'm gonna show, I think, well, I guess I have to take all these players, so it guarantees that we took an undrafted guy. I am gonna go with one of the two QBs. Do we want George Barrett, who is 22 years old? His combine wasn't good, and he only has decent throw power. His ratings are pretty good though. A trucking, that's interesting. Or do we want Dalton Ross, 22 years old as well, is a scrambler, elite throw power. We might have to go with him then. His passing ratings and ratings in general aren't as good, but elite throw power, at least okay speed. I think we have to go with him. I think we're gonna go with both anyways, but I guess we'll go with him first. Only 5'11", 208, so not very big for a QB, but let's take Dalton Ross out of Tennessee. 94 throw power, 84 speed, 87 excel. This dude must have have the worst passing stats you've ever seen. If he has 94 throw power and good scrambling ability and still isn't a good like a good player, but we'll see. And I guess he technically won't be too bad of value because he's a day three player and we took him day three. So I don't know. We'll see. But that's it. I'm going to take the rest of these picks. You know what? I'll, I'll show the other QB. George Barrett. Let's take him too. Also normal dev, but looks weird. He has, oh, he has 88 Excel, but only 73 speed. That's like a lineman stat or something like that's how lineman are sometimes. Also a QB wearing zero. How long is it going to be before we see that? Because that would be kind of, that would be kind of filthy. I'm not going to lie. That would be kind of cool. I'm down for that. But anyways, let's get to the end of the draft and hopefully we got some okay players, but we'll see. I don't have much faith. Okay. Well, here's how we did in the draft. Not the greatest draft we've ever had, obviously, but not terrible considering it was all undrafted guys. The best player we took was Taylor Clement or Clement at a 71 overall. He does look pretty good. His ratings, I don't understand how he is a 71 overall, but we'll take it. And he does, of course, have hidden devs, so I think we're gonna start him this year. Who was our tight end last year? I'm recording this the next day. I can't remember. I feel like when I sleep, my memory just gets completely white for some reason. <laughs> it was fucking... It wasn't Taysom Hill. I just cut Taysom Hill because I knew he was gonna regress into the ground. Dan Arnold? No, he was like our third string. I, I don't know. Either way, Clement's gonna start. Surely our first pick was not nearly as good as I thought he would be. I thought he would be like a 71-ish, but he's only a 67. Same with Dante Scott. The two QBs are solid. Dalton Ross at a 67 and then George Barrett at a 66. We might have a QB controversy because I kind of want to give one of these guys a chance, but also Tyler Huntley was solid last year, but also
also, he wasn't anything crazy, so I don't know. And then for the rest of the draft, this guy sucks. This guy sucks, but he does have a dev trait. And then I picked two backup linemen. I just went with two strong ones. I guess Rhodes isn't very strong, but Boyle at least has okay strength. So not the best draft ever, but not terrible considering it's all undrafted guys. So we'll take it. And let me see if there are any good players that actually went undrafted. But here's a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. We're looking pretty okay, better than I thought we would. And we do have potential heading into the year. I'm surprised Huntley didn't get a dev trait because he did throw like over 30 touchdowns, but still only normal dev. I'm If he does suck again, we might start either Ross or Barrett. Probably Ross because he's a higher overall, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to start this Harden guy at receiver. I just picked him up out of free agency after the draft. Looks pretty good. We're also going to start Clement at tight end, obviously. And then on defense, there were also a few players that were just sitting with dev traits. Like Little was a defensive tackle, but he was only a 61. But I moved him to defensive end and he went up to a 65. I don't know if he's ever going to see the field, but if the players in front of him do start regressing, he definitely could. We'll see though. I also did move Mike Hilton to strong safety just because we had too many corners and not enough safeties. So that works out. It's not exactly a realistic rebuild, believe it or not. Oh, and also Shirley randomly got star dev. I didn't even see like a scenario for it unless I just missed it. Well, no, I would have had to click on it. I have no idea how he got star dev though. Does it tell me? Oh yeah. Wait, why did he get that? Dev trade increase from training maybe? It doesn't really say, but we'll take it. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. Is that a new thing where players can just randomly get dev traits? Like without a scenario or anything like that? I'll take it, but it's interesting. But anyways, let's get to the mid-season point of year number two, and hopefully we can do okay, but usually year two doesn't go very well in rebuilds, so we might be 0-7. We'll see. Okay, well, at the mid-season point of year two, we are two and four. Not as bad as I thought we would be, but still not good, obviously. I want to see how Tyler Huntley's doing. Oh, he's not doing well. Um, should we bench him? I mean, he hasn't been the worst, but he also hasn't been good enough to get us past like two wins. So we might try one of the rookie QBs just to see what we have there. We'll see what we get from Dalton Ross in the second half of the year. He was obviously the one that's like, I mean, comparable to like early career Josh Allen. That's kind of what he's like, actually. Super raw, but really strong arm and fast. I guess he's not strong like Josh Allen is, but still. So we'll try him out at QB. But we do have some re-signings to make here this year, and it's actually interesting. There isn't anyone major, but there are these like decent UDFAs I picked up, like D'Angelo Hardin, Dwight Little, Derek Bird. We could re-sign Deontay Hardy, Keegan White, another UDFA, but nobody here is interested at all, except I guess these first two. So it kind of makes it tough. We do get D'Angelo Hardin back. That's good. Aquara, we don't need. He's just depth. Dwight Little, three years, 12.6 mil, and he doesn't sign. Derek Bird, two years, 6.2 mil, also doesn't sign. Hmm. Keegan White, three years, 13.5 mil. He also doesn't sign. Okay, this might be tough. I feel like even if we get good UDFAs, it's gonna be almost impossible to keep them unless we like tag them or something. I guess we didn't go very player friendly for the offers. We just went player friendly, but still. I'm not sure that they would have accepted it if it was very player friendly. So I don't know. That's something we'll worry about for the future. We're not even that far off of the lead of this division, by the way. We're two and four and the Patriots and Dolphins are three and four. So if this QB can, you know, play really well, we could be right in this division. Like I'm right in your mother. Sorry. But with that, let's get to the end of year two and hopefully we can maybe have a shot at the playoffs, but my guess is we're gonna finish somewhere similar to last year, but we'll see. Okay, well, at the end of year number two, we make the playoffs going eight and nine. I mean, I was like half joking when I said that. Well, not really joking, but like I didn't really expect to happen at all, but we do win the division at only eight and nine. We will take that, good Lord. Now let's check out the season stats. Dalton Ross was okay, I guess. 2,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, 11 picks. Definitely better than Huntley was. So I guess we'll take that, but we still might be looking for a new QB. Austin Eckler with 1,100 yards, 4.2 per carry, nine touchdowns. Jacoby Myers with 1,000 yards again, 10 touchdowns. Harden as a rookie with 760 yards, eight touchdowns. Not much outside of that though. Ooh, Lael Collins was horrific. And Ryan Bates, low key. But the rest of the line was okay. Alex Singleton led the team with 110 tackles. 
Kenny Moore with 109, just one behind him. Tackles for loss, 18 for Michael Pierce led the team. And then sacks, seven for Frankie Louvu led the team. Only six and a half for Shaq Barrett, six for Pierce, five and a half for Autry. And then interceptions, two for Edwards, Singleton, and Neal, and then one for Moore and Hilton. MVP goes to someone different, finally. It goes to Jalen Hurts. Mahomes at number two. Josh Allen on the Colts at number five. You. Dak at number nine. Thank God. Get him out of here. <laughs> that was genuinely like the lowest I've ever seen him. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor. So the Colts have an insane duo between Allen and Taylor now. I'm glad we created that monster. TJ Watt wins defensive player of the year. Baron Browning up there. That's interesting. But no Bills. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Joe Horn on the Chargers. Great name. D'Angelo Harden at number three. Taylor Clement at number five. Or Clement, whatever the hell his name is. And then Dalton Ross at number seven. I was hoping he would be a little higher, but yeah, I guess like 18 passing touchdowns isn't great. Although if he played a full season, it would have been probably over 30. So I don't know, but it probably would have also been like 20 picks. So it is what it is. Defensive rookie of the year goes to JC James on the Broncos and no bills up there. So no award wins. Unfortunately, I was hoping we could, but yeah, our offensive rookies, none of them were like amazing. Obviously they were solid, but none of them were amazing. But we have a first of many scenario here. Of course, we're going to be playing the Colts in the wild card, but for the first of many, gotta go play it cool. Y'all know me. And with that, let's simulate this game against the Colts. Okay, we of course do lose. Now, to be honest, our team wasn't that much worse than theirs. We only were down by like one overall, but we probably got smacked, I'm guessing. Even though we did have a winning record, it didn't feel like we did great. Or, well, we didn't have a winning record, but we made the playoffs. We didn't get smacked necessarily, but we got beat 19 to 10, which is an ugly score. I guess we maybe held them to a lot of field goals. I don't know. Or maybe there was a safety somewhere, but we have a recap for the first of many. I think we still get staff points. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, please. And thank you. Five staff points. We'll take it. And let's get into the off season. And in the Super Bowl, we have the two Super Bowl losers from the last two years in real life. The Bengals win this one though, 24 to 16 over the Eagles, despite having a worse record at 11 and six to their 13 and four. So tough for the Eagles. It looks like we had a lot of regression though. We're down to an 80 overall now. That's not great. And then for re-signings, Aquara were good. I'm surprised he hasn't regressed at all. Tyler Huntley, he's not that expensive, but like, eh. Dwight Little I want back just cause he has a dev trait, but like we might be able to find another D lineman with a dev trait. He does re-sign though. So I guess we'll take it. Derek Bird, same deal, very player friendly. He takes it too. But this is all just like depth. None of this is that interesting. Oh, Keegan White doesn't resign. All right, that's fine. And then these are all just backups through here. So we're good. And let's get into the off season. I don't think there's going to be much for us to do in free agency though. Was Jalen Warren undrafted? I'm pretty sure he was. We could sign him if I wanted to. Yeah, so I think we'll go for him just to be a good backup. Would he be our number two or three? I can't remember. But either way, we'll go for him and I'll see if there's anyone else we can go for. But I don't know if any of these players are even going to see the field like at all anyways. So it might not matter. <laughs> okay, well, we're not doing anything crazy in free agency, but we are adding a few decent players. We're going for Tim Patrick, Jalen Warren, Reed Blankenship, Chris Barnes, and Jack Sanborn. We do have the lead for all of them, so I'm hoping we can get all of them. I'm iffy on getting Tim Patrick because he is 31 years old, and it might be better to just go with young players. We might just start younger players, but I guess it wouldn't be bad to have him as a backup worst case scenario. So let's see if we can sign any of these players. It looks like only two of them sign. Chris Barnes and Jack Sanborn, we do get both of them, but I guess we're still the only team interested for these three, so that's fine. Let's see if we can sign them now. None of them sign, and let's try one more time. Okay, we get Tim Patrick and Reed Blankenship. Still no Jalen Warren, but I mean, if we get him, we get him. If not, then we don't, I guess. Well, no shit, but like, it is what it is. It doesn't really matter. He'll just be a number two, so we'll just get to the draft. Hopefully he signs, but it's not the end of the world if he doesn't. But here in the draft, we have pick number 19. It's not like the draft matters much anyways. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think we're necessarily in danger of the players we're going for getting picked early. I really couldn't find like any good players in this class though. I'm not gonna lie. So it might be a short one of me showing it at least, but I'll take the time to look through at the very least. I think we're gonna go for another tight end and it's gonna be AJ Hart. He's a good pass blocker. 
Yay. He has good catching stats, or er, pretty good. I don't know if he's all that good, honestly, but he is strong. And to be honest, there's no one else that looks good. So let's take AJ Hart out of Oklahoma State in the first round. And he does have hidden dev, not fast, but almost 80 strength at tight end, 86 excel is pretty good, and 69 change of direction. Nice. There was a solid looking defensive tackle too. Who was it? It was Eric Sinclair. He's a terrible pass rusher, but he does have 38 bench reps. He really doesn't look good though. Maybe we'll wait on him. I thought he was going to be better. Yeah, fuck it. There isn't really anyone that looks better. We will go Eric Sinclair out of Oklahoma. We're going back to back Oklahoma picks. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. Again, two big schools, obviously. So it's interesting that these are all the UDFAs, but I guess they're just like backups on those teams or like not the best players on those teams, but they'll do the job for us. So let's go with Eric Sinclair. Normal dev, unfortunately, but 93 strength, 82 excel is pretty good. We'll take it. And I think that's the last pick I'm going to show because, again, no players in this class for UDFAs looked great. We might go with Sean Barton, actually, to be the last pick. He does look like a good slot receiver, and a lot of the time slot receivers are pretty good. They never have dev traits, but now that I say that, this guy probably will. But no, they really never have dev traits. So let's go with Sean Barton out of another bigger school in Florida State. No dev trait, but 90 speed. Not much to go off of there. Could be a good pick. We'll see. Okay, well, this was an interesting draft. I guess we didn't get anyone, like, awful, awful. We didn't get anyone below a 66, which is, that's solid, considering we're picking literally only undrafted players, but AJ Hart, our first pick, is not as good as I thought he would be. I'm glad he has a dev trait, but he's only a 67 overall, so that's not great. He's a really bad blocker. I thought he would be better at that. Eric Sinclair is a 69. Nice. He does actually look pretty solid. The best player we got was Sean Barton at a 71 overall. Might get some playing time. We'll see what happens. He does look decent. He doesn't look amazing at anything, but we'll take it. His catch and traffic is really good though, so I guess that's the one thing he's really good at. And then just some backups that may or may not make the team. Deontay Parrish, this QB, was the one draftable UDFA QB. Looks solid at a 68 overall. And then Tyquan Carmen in the seventh round. Good looking running back for sure. He was just like the fastest power back available. I usually like to take those kind of players for obvious reasons. You know, they have speed and they have power. Sounds good to me. Not that he's fast necessarily with only 90 speed for a running back, but it's good for a power back at like 235 pounds or whatever he is. So not the best draft, but not bad considering it was only undrafted level players. Okay, well, here we are heading into year number three of the rebuild. This is probably the second to last year. I don't know. I guess we'll see how many we want to do. But the team is looking pretty solid. We're an 81 overall, which isn't great, but considering the challenge we're doing, it's not too bad. Hopefully Dalton Ross can be better this year. Not that he was terrible last year, but maybe even better. We'll see. This receiving core is messy. I want to start younger players, but also we have better players that are older. So like, this is the depth chart I went with, I guess. And hopefully the blocking can be better this year. Lael Collins was terrible last year. And then here is the defense. The defense really hasn't changed much throughout the rebuild, just older players regressing, but that's like pretty much it for the most part. We still have an 83 defense, only an 81 offense though, or no, an 80 offense. This rebuild would be a lot different if we had like a good QB, it's just undrafted QBs don't really get much of a chance in real life, and a lot of them aren't good, to be fair, <laughs> but still. But with that, let's get to the mid-season point of year number three, and hopefully we can do pretty well. Okay, well... <laughs> At the midseason point of year three, we are one in five. Not great. Um, is our QB bad randomly? God, he is. Why? He was good last year. Do we switch it again and go with Deontay Parrish? I mean, we could. We could. But I feel like QBs don't do well year w or the first half of the year regardless. Maybe he'll bounce back in the second half. I don't know. But if he sucks for the rest of the year, we might try something different at QB. We have some re-signings to make here. It looks like a lot of them. Oh, great. Like the entire team and none of them are interested literally at all. All right. We might be forced into the final year of the rebuild here. <laughs> Jacoby Myers. Oh, no. <laughs> That was very player friendly. Okay, Eckler resigns at the very least. TJ Edwards doesn't resign. Charvarius Ward doesn't resign. Kenny Moore does. Okay, cool. Do we really need Cater Kohu? I think he's a backup. Frankie Louvu doesn't resign.
resign. JC Jackson does. Okay, cool. Bryce Huff resigns. Ryan Neal resigns. Okay, cool. Tier Tart resigns. Levi Wallace, we don't need. Jonathan Jones, we might not need. Shaq Barrett's gonna regress. Terrence Steele does resign. Okay, cool. He's been surprisingly good. He used to be like one of the worst tackles in last year's game, but he's been good here. Aziz Al Shire does not resign, but like, eh. Do we really want Lael Collins back? He does resign, but he's been horrid, so I don't know. Same with Ryan Bates, low key, but he does resign. Michael Pierce resigns. David Andrews doesn't resign. Mike Hilton doesn't resign. Andrew Norwell resigns. There are so many contracts here. Good lord. Poon affords a backup. Justin Tucker resigns. And Ryan Stonehouse doesn't resign. So all these guys that didn't resign will just worry about again at the end of the year. Unfortunately, it's like all of our best players, at least with the top three, but we'll see what happens there. So I'll check out some of the other stats. Do we want to make any benches like on the offensive line or something? I have a feeling that's kind of what the problem is with this team. Yeah, Leo Collins is just terrible. So we'll bench him. It's going to be like a UDFA in there. Well, obviously, but like just someone random in there, but it really couldn't be worse. I mean, it could be, but it would be hard to be worse. <laughs> we'll go with Josh Parrish, a rookie. He was like our fifth round pick or something. So hopefully that doesn't ruin us too bad, but it really couldn't be worse. I mean, Collins is on pace for like over 20 sacks allowed, so it, it, it couldn't be worse. So with that, let's get to the end of the year. Okay, well, in year number three, we finish five and 12 once again, missing the playoffs. Well, I guess not once again missing the playoffs. We made them last year, but we do not make them this year. At least we made the playoffs once with this team, but good Lord. Dalton Ross wasn't good. I kind of do wish I started Deontay Parrish. Wasn't that our left tackle's name too? No, it was Josh Parrish. He was bad, but he was better than Leal Collins, so I guess we'll take it. Austin Eckler was also bad. Under 1,000 yards, only 3.7 yards per carry. He was so good year one. What happened? Last year, he was a little worse, and then this year, he was even worse. D'Angelo Harden led the team with 1,100 yards. Only three touchdowns, though. Jacoby Myers, only 800 yards. Decent amount of receiving yards overall. Terrence Steele kind of sucked this year, and by kind of sucked, I mean he was really bad. Uh, Parrish wasn't good, but he was better than Leal Collins, to be fair. I mean, 11 sacks and over 700 snaps? I would take that over 8 sacks allowed in less than 400 snaps. David Andrews sucked this year, Andrew Norwell did too. Ryan Bates was our only, like, good lineman, and even then he was just okay. TJ Edwards led the team with 118 tackles, 115 for El Shayer, sacks, 7, or tackles for loss, 17 from Barrett, and then 13 from Pearson Tart, and then Sacks, 9 from Shaq Barrett. Of course, his best year comes when he's already, like, fully regressed. That makes sense. 7 from Frankie Louvu, and then nothing outside of that. Interceptions, 3 for Kenny Moore, 2 for Ward, Edwards, and Neal, and then 1 for Alshire and Hilton. Interesting. MVP goes to Justin Herbert. Dak back up there at number 4. Josh Allen at number 6. Jordan Love on the Rams. That's interesting. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Mike Williams. Williams, that's different. At least we're seeing different stuff in this franchise when we literally like altered the entire league, taking like every undrafted player from every team. <laughs> Not much difference, but a little difference. But nobody up there for either award. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Zare Allen on the Broncos. Sean Barton at number eight. I didn't even know he got playing time. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year went to James Gates on the Patriots. No bills. So, I mean, disappointing year, obviously. And I don't know what we're gonna do to get better. I was really hoping our QB would actually do well, and maybe he will next year, but like, that definitely wasn't a great year. And I don't want to start Parrish, because I'm sure that if I start Parrish in his second year, he's just going to have a year similar to what Ross had this year. So we'll just hope that Ross can take the next step, maybe. I mean, he has a lot of traits. Maybe he can have like a Josh Allen type breakout. I mean, he's wearing the right number. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But let's get into the offseason, heading into the fourth and final year of this rebuild. But in the Super Bowl, the Bengals take down the Cowboys 23-17. to Yay, the Cowboys in another Super Bowl. How realistic. I mean, I think that's the only time this rebuild, so I guess it's not too bad, but still, I just don't know why they're so broken in this game. Well, it, I think the Cowboys ratings adjuster is, or the Madden rating adjuster is a Cowboys fan, so that probably explains it, but still. But for the rest of our re-signings, yo, this is, hold on, I'm really mature by the way. Five years, 6.9 million salary, 6.9 million bonus, 
this. 69 mil total. If he rejects this, I'm gonna kill myself. Please take it. Let's go. <laughs> Jacoby Myers resigns for 69 million. I'm very mature, like I said. Let's try to bring TJ Edwards back too. I upped it from the base, very player friendly, four years, 53 mil, and he resigns too. Charvarius Ward will up this a little bit too, and he resigns. I mean, there's no reason to not up all these contracts. Like, we have no need for money, really. <laughs> Frankie Louvu resigns to Cater Kohu, I guess I can resign. He's really not expensive at all. He resigns. Shaq Barrett, I want back because he was, of course, good in a contract year. Who would have guessed? And he does resign. Aziz Al Shair. I forgot how many we had left. He resigns. Ellen Lazard. If he's available, or if there's no one better available in free agency, then maybe, but like, eh, I'm good. Mike Hilton does resign too. Jonathan Jones, I guess I can resign. And Ryan Stonehouse will bring back. And he doesn't take it. We'll just tag him. So we're going to be letting all these players go. They're all depth or like, I think we can replace them in worst case scenario, we could bring them back. But let's get into free agency. All right. Well, truly elite free agent class we're going for here. We're going for Rashid Shahid to be our number two receiver. Yay. We're going for Tyler Huntley. He got star dev. He was good for whatever team he was on, of course. So we'll bring him back and he probably will start and he'll probably suck to be fair. We're going for Andre James to come in at center. Uh, David Edwards retired, or David Andrews. I guess we also had David, or no, David Edwards got drafted, but he is on the Bills, I think. I, I'm confusing myself. So we're gonna go for him, and this Braxton Hunt guy, the safety with superstar dev, I did make sure he is undrafted. He's been around for a couple years, so a team brought him back for one year and then let him go this year. So we'll definitely scoop him up, you know what I'm saying? But let's see if we can sign any of these truly amazing players. It looks like all of them do sign, and we do get all of them. So it, that was a free agent class, I'll say that. I'm not necessarily happy with it, but we'll have to take it, <laughs> yay. But with that, I guess let's just get to the draft. Okay, well here in the draft, we have the number four overall pick. The Saints have number one. I don't know how I thought this rebuild would go. I didn't think it would go this bad, but it is what it is. <laughs> At least it's kind of fun to do. Also, what the fuck are these first round receivers? Gross. But I don't know who I even want to take here. Honestly, none of these players look good. At least ones I find. This guy looked okay to me, but also he's not very strong or not very fast. I took a guy like him a couple years ago and he only ended up being like a 67. So if I can't find anyone better, then I'll go with this guy. But this guy might be better, actually. He does have better play rec, I think. And I don't know if the other guy had a tackle pursuit and hit power. He might have, but I don't know. For now, that guy's going to be our first pick, but I don't feel great about it. Ooh, this guy looks good, too. A little faster, but not as strong and worse tackle. Eh, and then these guys I can't take. Oh, I don't even know if I could have taken that guy. Yeah, I couldn't have. Never mind. I've probably already taken a, like, day three player on accident, but maybe they would have gone undrafted anyways. I, I don't know. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's that slot guy. I focus scouted him. Damn, he looks good. He might be like a 75-ish overall, maybe like a 74. This is gonna be our best pick yet. Tavon Osgood. Sounds like Tavon Austin. I mean, he doesn't really look anything like Tavon Austin, but still. Let's take him. Normal dev, of course, because he is a slot receiver, but 95 excel. God damn. He will probably start for us this year. I like that pick a lot. Definitely the best player we have drafted so far. Either him or that tight end, because the tight end did have a dev trait, even though he was like four overall lower, but still. And again here, I don't know how many picks I'm going to show. Some of these centers look good. I don't know if they just look good because there aren't many good centers or if they're actually good. Casey Kane. Hell yeah, brother. Shout out NASCAR, I guess. That's not how you spell it, but close enough. This guy's interesting. Kevin Dwyer. He looks okay. His power isn't good, though. We might go with him, though. I don't think he's good, but I don't think anyone we could take is good, so yeah. This guy also looks uh, okay, but at least he's fully scouted. Yeah, fuck it. Let's go with Kevin Dwyer out of Purdue. Sounds good. Cool. He probably sucks, but 69 agility. Nice. I'm like way back from my mic right now. I'm fucking shleening out here. And with the last pick that I'm going to show, we'll go with Miles Preston. He looks okay. Does he have poor, oh, poor acceleration. I feel like poor acceleration is a big killer for overall. I feel like acceleration is really 
important for players in this game. But let's take him out of Washington, another normal dev, of course. He might be okay, we'll see. But I'll make the rest of these picks, obviously, and hopefully we got some good players. I could. I wonder if I should make a trade. I wonder if there are any undrafted players that have developed in this world. I'll check real quick. Okay, well, here we're trading Bird, the defensive tackle, Parrish, our, like, third string QB, and Jack Sanborn, along with a fourth round pick, to the Saints for Juwan Johnson, who is up to a 79 overall. I guess he'll be our starter. We don't really need tight end, but it is an upgrade, and if we can upgrade this team, we might as well, because we need any upgrade we could get. Okay, well, this was definitely our best draft so far. This would, this wouldn't be that bad of a regular draft. I mean, getting a 75 normal dev at four overall pick isn't terrible, or isn't great, but I've done worse, to be fair. In the second round pick, technically wasn't great, but Miles Preston in the, in the third round is a 70 overall. Ty Foreman in the sixth round, another linebacker, but he is a 72 overall, so that's really good value. No dev traits for literally anybody here, which does kind of suck, but they're all decent players. I wonder if Cameron would go up at defensive tackle. I mean, he's 303 pounds, so I'm guessing he will. And he does. He goes up to a 68, so that makes this look even better. So I'm slowly getting the hang of drafting UDFAs, I guess. We'll take it. But here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. Not the best in the world, but <laughs> at least we're an 80. This is a hard challenge. This is harder than I thought it would be. Going into it, I just imagine the starting team being better. I feel like this team would have been better like five years ago or something. But then again, I don't even know who the QB would have been still because Tony Romo was already out of the league, obviously. I don't know, but the team isn't too bad. I'm worried about the O-line. We're going to try Terrence Steele at left tackle instead of Leo Collins. We'll see how that goes. And hopefully Tyler Huntley can be pretty good. We'll see. What were Ross's stats last year? I can't remember. Oh yeah, not, not great. So we'll try Tyler Huntley. We'll see how Osgood does as a rookie too. And hopefully Austin Eckler can do good again because last year he wasn't great. And then the defense is still solid for sure. Slowly regressing more and more now down to an 81, but still solid for sure. But with that, let's just get straight to the end of year four and hopefully this team can do pretty well, but we'll see. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number four, whatever year it is. And super quick before I reveal how we did, if you have not already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. It really helps out a ton. I would very much appreciate it. 1,500 likes, is that what I set the goal as? And I can do a similar video to this. I don't know what I would do, but I could come up with something. No, well, I actually do have one planned, so 1,500 likes for that. Be sure to like. It takes you like two seconds. I really appreciate it. And subscribe if you want to be an OG of the channel, of course, while you still can be one. We're getting really close to 15K. We might already be at it. Or I meant 14, and no, we're very close, so be sure to subscribe. And also, let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all might have, because, you know, if I pick your idea, I'll give you a shout out for sure. But here is a look at the defense as well. And let's go over the season stats before I reveal how we did, which maybe will give you an idea of how we did, but still. Tyler Huntley was nowhere near as good as he was last year. Only 3,600 yards, 21 touchdowns, 14 picks. I don't think I ever showed how he did last year, but he was good. Almost 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, 13 picks. So 10 more touchdowns and one less pick for the Jets of all teams. Austin Eckler was good. 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, 4.5 per carry, 1,150 yards and nine touchdowns for Myers. Rashid Shahid was solid. Tavon Osgood was fine as a rookie. The offensive line held up really well. I would say our worst lineman was Andrew Norwell, maybe, or Terrence Steele, but neither of them were as bad as they could have been. So Steele at left tackle and Collins at right was definitely the move, unless it's just playing better because of Tyler Huntley, which would make sense as kind of a scrambling type, knows how to get out of sack. TJ Edwards led the team with 130 tackles, good amount overall, which I guess isn't a good thing. It means our defense was on the field a lot. Michael Pierce and Shaq Barrett led the team with 16 tackles for loss, also 14 for Tart, and then sacks, actually a really good amount. 10 and a half for Shaq Barrett, nine for Frankie Luvu, but not much outside of that. And then interceptions, we had a good amount. We had four from Kenny Moore and Mike Hilton, three from Aziz Alshair, two for Edwards and Jackson, and one for Ward. What was the problem with this team? Was it just Tyler Huntley? Does he just suck? Because literally everything else was good. Let's check out the early awards. MVP goes to, oh God, we're slowly regressing back. That top five, oh my God, that's the top five, like all the time. There are at least three of these five players in the top five every single time. It's Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and 
Joe Burrow. At least, you know, four of those make sense. And Josh Allen's also up there a lot, but he's on the Colts. Sucks to be him. Offensive player of the year goes to Josh Jacobs, at least for the AFC. Defensive player of the year goes to Drew Sanders. I hate his picture. It's, what is the lighting? Did they open, like, a window on, like, a super sunny day? Or did they have the light, like, two feet from his face coming from the side? Like, why, what is that picture? I feel like all the rookie pictures are that. Like, Tyree Wilson looks like he has a bright light on the other side. I guess not as bright, but still. Like, <laughs> what happened? Tavon Osgood was number three for Offensive Rookie of the Year. We'll take that. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Jabari Westerman on the Titans. That kind of sounds like a Titans player. I don't know why. But if you couldn't already tell, I don't know how, looking at the stats, but in year number four, we went 7-10, and 10, missing the playoffs. Our defense wasn't good, despite putting up really good numbers. I guess we had two players get a lot of sacks, but like none outside of the, those top two. But we did have a ton of picks, so I don't know. But that's, of course, gonna be the end of today's rebuild. It was a fun one regardless. It was really hard, you know, as you would expect, a team of all undrafted players. At least we made the playoffs once, you know, despite not having a winning record. And we did okay this year. But again, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. I very much appreciate it. I really hope y'all did enjoy, though. I've been loving all the rebuild challenges lately, even though some of them aren't successful. I don't expect them all to be, you know, super great results, but they're more just fun to do. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.